One of the main risk factors is that the baby may sleep with its head turned to one side more than the other. And because when newborn babies are born, they don't have a huge amount of muscle strength in their neck muscles to turn their neck, then that baby is going to lie on one part of the back of its skull, sleep after sleep, day after day, night after night. And it's that repeated positioning on the back of their head that is the biggest risk factor associated with developing flat head syndrome. We would ask all parents to take some time to recognize if their babies have a preference to look to one side more than the other. And we know from research that most full-term babies do prefer to look to their right side more than to their left side. Now that in itself is not a problem. If you have a strong, robust baby and they can turn their head from side to side, then that's something you don't need to be overly worried. But if you notice that when you lie your baby down to sleep or when you put them in their rocking chair or in their uh, baby bouncer seat, that they turn their head to the same side day after day, sleep after sleep, then that should be an automatic cue to you to look at the, what's happening to the shape of the baby's head at the back of the baby's head. So just to be alert to the fact that your baby may have what we call a head turning preference. It's amazing how fast flat head syndrome can develop and again we know from research um, that babies can develop a flattened head within the first six to eight weeks of life. So if you notice it one of the first people that you should raise your concern with is with your public health nurse or if it's around the eight week age mark then your baby's due its first vaccination. And again, you can raise your concerns with the GP practice nurse or with the GP themselves. If they are in agreement that your baby does have a degree of head flattening, then you should ask to be referred for a physiotherapy assessment. So as a parent, one of the easiest ways to prevent the formation of flat head syndrome is to get into the daily habit of frequently changing your baby's position while they are awake and while they are feeding, as you're carrying them and as you're dressing and changing their nappy. Now we know, according to the World Health Organization, that all babies must sleep on the flat of their back with their feet to the end of the cot at every sleep. But what you can introduce is turning their head to the right for one sleep and to the left for the next sleep. And then in between sleeps to get into the habit of varying the position in which you carry, handle, feed, play and dress with them. So here are some different ways in which you can introduce changes of position for your baby as you carry out routine daily caregiving activities with your baby. So one thing that we have to do with our baby several times a day and night is to feed them. And so when you're breastfeeding, as you lie your baby and you put their weight through one el elbow and attach them on. Here the baby is completely off the back of their head and their, and their head has got lots of free time to mould and to remould. As you then finish off the feed on the other side, the baby is now exposed to lying on a different part of their head. If you are not breastfeeding, you simply just change the position that you hold the baby in during your bottle feeding feeding on your left arm for one feed and trying to introduce at least one feed a day by holding your baby on the opposite side. Again, giving your baby an opportunity to offload the amount of pressure going through the same side of its skull at each feed. When you're finished feeding, you can introduce tummy time during part of your winding procedure. So as you lay the baby over your shoulder, and introduce your winding motion. Now the baby's completely off the back of its head and again the skull has got no deforming pressures going down through it. As part of your dressing you may decide to lie the baby on its tummy on your lap making sure that you turn the baby's head to the right during one dressing procedure and maybe to the left tomorrow or the day after. 
And in this position, you can do up the poppers or you can dress them. And you're introducing the baby to a nice period of time lying on their tummy while still being close to mum or to dad. Likewise, you can introduce dressing the baby lying on its side, putting its leg and its hand through the baby grow before you roll them over and dress the other hand and the other leg through the baby grow. The added advantage of doing this is that you're introducing the baby to early movement and you're encouraging the baby to use its neck muscles to turn its own head from the left to the right. One position that all parents like, and we encourage you to do this from the labour ward onwards, is the lovely skin to skin position of reclining with your baby, resting on your chest. Again, making sure that they're looking to the left or to the right. In this position, which is a modified tummy time position, again, the baby is completely off the back of its head. And again, there are no deforming forces going down through the back of the baby's head. It's also a lovely way to bond and attach with your newborn baby. So as a parent, another way to help prevent your baby developing flat head syndrome is to be aware how long they are sitting in their car seats and other forms of chairs like swings and plastic bouncer seats. It is advisable that we would only use our car seats while the baby is on a car journey. And when you get to where you're going, that you would take the baby out of the car seat and place them in a flat, firm surface or to use a baby sling or a baby carrier that has good neck and head support for the age of your baby. So as part of the treatment of flat head syndrome, you will be advised to change your baby's position several times throughout the day. So as you lay your baby down to sleep by day and by night, you'll be asked to be aware of what side their head is turning to. And if they prefer to look to the right, you should gently turn the baby's head to the left once they're settled into a light sleep. One of the other pieces of advice you will be given is to change the baby's position within the crib or to change the position of the crib within the room. Babies will naturally turn their head to listen to mum and therefore if you and the baby are facing each other the same way every night then that can sometimes feed into why the baby is turning to one side. By day, you will be encouraged to lift your baby and carry your baby in positions that will encourage your baby to turn the head to the side that it doesn't want to turn it to himself or herself. One of the simplest ways to do that is to carry your baby in sideline. So if your baby likes to look to their left, you will be encouraged to carry your baby lying on their left side. This is a safe, comfortable position, which now encourages your baby to keep its head in the middle. And because it will turn its ear to hear you and it'll turn its head to see you, then the baby is more likely to now turn the head to the right, which is the, the direction that you wanted to turn it in the first place. One of the main treatments of flat head syndrome is to encourage your baby to spend as much time as possible when they are awake on their tummy. So introducing your baby to early tummy time will be part of the treatment. So either during winding or during dressing, as you hold your baby, as you wind and burp them, changing the baby's position from one shoulder to the other shoulder to encourage them to look to both sides. As your baby gets older, you can do tummy time on a play mat on the floor or equally after a nappy change. A nice habit to get into is letting the baby rest on its tummy on the changing mat. And that's a lovely way of introducing tummy time as part of everyday life. As for the future, research has shown us that babies who have a mild degree of flattening 
will go on and their head will remold itself back into a normal shape. However, babies who have a severe form of flat head syndrome, while their head shape will definitely improve over the first two years and for anything up to five to eight years afterwards, there will always be some element of flat head syndrome left behind. However, hair growth after the first year of life usually camouflages any degree of flattening at the back of the head.